Hey everyone and welcome to the next level. Today I'm going to show you two amazing ways that are pretty much guaranteed to help you improve keeping time. Now keeping time is very important for all instruments, so listen up. Now before I show you the two ways in which you should be practicing with a metronome, let me quickly go over how people usually practice with a metronome and why it's not only not helpful, but it actually slows you down and develops a bad habit of dependency. Most people use a metronome in one of two ways. They either use the metronome on beats one and three, like this. Or they use the metronome on beats two and four, like this. Now, why is this not the way to go? Well, plainly speaking, if you're a beginner and you don't know how to keep time at all, then using the click on one and three or two and four is fine. But if you're anywhere near intermediate player, then in using the click on beat two and four or beat one and three, all you're doing is you're basically leaning on the metronome. You're leaning on the click and you're relying on it to keep time for you instead of it being you keeping time. You see? If the metronome hits all the time, then you really don't have to sweat about keeping much time now, do you? And if you practice like that a lot, then you develop a sort of dependency. You never really have to worry about keeping time because there's always a metronome keeping that time for you. Not only does it not help you develop a better sense of time, but worse, it gets you used to leaning on an external agent to keep time while you make music. I hope you're starting to see how this can be counterproductive. If our goal is to develop a good sense of time and a good ability to keep time ourselves, we must come up with ways of practice that encourage such habits rather than discourage them by having you lean on an external timekeeper. So then, how should one practice with a metronome? Here are two ways which are 100% guaranteed to help. Method number one. Let's say you're practicing something in 120 beats per minute, like this. have the metronome mark time once every bar. 120 divided by 4 is 30 BPMs. So, something like this. Now, why is this a better method? I think it's pretty clear to see that if the metronome marks time this rarely, then the responsibility to keep good time falls almost entirely on you. And all that the metronome does is it checks in with you once every bar to keep you accountable and to make sure you're keeping good time. If the metronome clicks but once a bar, then you can no longer lean on it to keep time for you and you are now forced to keep time for your damn self. And all the metronome does is it occasionally checks in with you and holds your feet to the fire to make sure you're keeping steady time. So again, when you practice at 120 BPMs, don't do this. Do this.
You could also practice at the tempo of, I don't know, 160, and then you divide it by four, and now it's 40 BPMs. You choose how slow or how fast. All I'm trying to do is to explain the method to you. If you're practicing at a certain tempo, divide the tempo by four and set the click at your tempo divided by four. That's the method, no matter what tempo. The beauty of this method is it can be used to practice a variety of topics. Whether you're playing scales, arpeggios, whether you're practicing long tones on your horn, or a cool new funky bass line you transcribed somewhere, or maybe you're practicing rudiments on the drums, or maybe you're just playing through a chord progression to memorize a tune. No matter what you're practicing, you can always determine the BPM in which you're playing, divide that number by four, and set the click right there at your tempo divided by four. And from there on, continue your practicing as usual. Except now, you will be practicing two things at the same time. You'll be practicing whatever you were practicing before, plus you'll be inevitably practicing keeping good time in addition. So that's the first method. The second method of practicing with a metronome properly is this. When people practice with a metronome, it almost goes without saying that a metronome is gonna hit on the one of something, or on the two of something, or on the three, or on the four, right? Now, if you think about it for a second, that's not necessarily the only way of doing it. You could, for example, decide that the metronome is gonna hit on the second sixteenth of the beat every time. Think about it. If this is your beat in your head, you keep this in your head, right? The click could go like this. Right? You could decide that you're gonna keep time in your head and you will decide that the click is gonna fall on the second sixteenth. So in practice, it sounds a little something like this. One, two, three, four. 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 Or you could decide that the metronome is going to fall on the last sixteenth, like this. One, two, three, four. 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 Or, if you're playing in triplet mode, you could decide that the metronome is going to outline the second triplet, like this. Or you could decide that the metronome is going to outline the third triplet, like this. Now, yes, I realize this is a little tricky. So go in your own pace and adjust tempo as necessary. 
but it's important for me that you understand just this principle, right? That the click doesn't have to fall on beat one. The time is in your head, okay? The time is in you. And you can decide that the click is on the second sixteenth, or the third sixteenth, or the fourth sixteenth, or on the second triplet, or on the last triplet. And then once you decide that, you could practice that way. And again, all it does is it strengthens your iron sense of keeping time, which of course is the goal of all these exercises. The two ways of using a metronome I showed you in this video are pretty much 100% guaranteed to improve your sense of keeping time. Let me know if you have any questions or if you need any further instruction. This is it you guys, thank you so much for watching the video and checking out my channel. Please hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you still haven't. I read all the comments and I personally reply to everyone. So leave a comment down below and share your experience with me of how you do implementing these new interesting methods. Please comment, like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Peace.